Hi everyone and welcome back to Cooking Classic Poems with Nathan and Lexi. This is where we take another classic poem and we cook it up into a delicious dish for the whole family. Hi Lexi. Hi. You look different. There's something different about you. What is it? Um, I've had a haircut. It looks fantastic. You happy? Yeah. What is today's classic poem, Lexi? You're by Sylvia Plath. This is a classic poem by a classic poet and uh, it cooks up into a beautiful recipe if you didn't know. Uh, we're going to show you how to do it right now. Today we're looking at uh, Your by Sylvia Plath in this collection here, The World's Contracted Thus. So let's get to it. Now one of the first lines here Lexi is feet to the stars and moon skulled gild like a fish. How should we interpret that line? Uh, what have we got as fish today Lexi? Little fish shaped as fish. You can just use little little fillets of fish uh, and it also helps if they're in the shape of a fish. Shape of a fish. That's gone in already. Pop the fish into the bowl. And that one. That one. They're nice and warm. We've just toasted them a little in yes, the oven. Yes, we have. Yes. Wrapped up in yourself like a spool. Lexi, what have we got today? A spool. And what colour is it, Lex? Goldish. Goldish brown. It doesn't matter what colour it is. You can use any colour of spool as long as you chuck it in the bowl. Yeah. Brilliant work. Lexi, do you know much about Sylvia Plath? No. It's quite a story. Uh, I'll tell it to you one day, okay? Okay. All right, moving on then. Mute as a turnip. Lexi, what have we got? Turnip. We've got a turnip. Now we're going to have to do a bit of work here, folk. So what we'll do is we'll chop off the ends. If you want to pop it on the board, Lex. And that's perfect. We need to peel it, of course. Take it, Lex. Give it a good peel. Now, what is the difference between a carrot and a turnip, Lex? These are longer. They're a bit longer. I actually think turnips are just white carrots. They've just called them something different. I, I, I don't know what turnips are. It's a bit tricky, isn't it, when you're young, using peelers, don't you think? Because I am a young one. You are a young one. It's true. All right, we'll get as much of that peeled as we can. And what we'll do now is just give it a bit of a shred. Lexi, if you can just grab the grater. What we need to do is we just need to grate that turnip up. Here we are, over the board, Lex. Give it a bit of a run, watch your fingers. This is what Sylvia Plath would have done years ago with her turnip uh, when she was writing this poem. That's it, good work. Comes out on the board like that. Needs to be nice and shredded. What do you think she was thinking about when she was shredding her turnip in making this poem, Lex? Turnips. More turnips, yeah. <laughs> okay, get back. So here we have our shredded turnip, or white carrot. What we just need to do is throw that in with the fish and the spool, Lex. Just, uh, that's it, pop it up there. A bit of shredded turnip. Okay, next line. This is a wonderful recipe so far, don't you think? Let's keep moving on to the next line. <laughs> Will do. Oh, hi, riser, my little loaf. Lexi, can you grab our next ingredient, please? What we have here are... Three bits of loaf. Three bits of loaf. We've toasted them up in the oven, and it's always good to try your produce. We want nice, fresh produce. And we'll put a bit of butter on that, Lex. We'll have a bit of a taste, shall yeah. we? Melty, yeah. melty butter. Have a bite of that, Lex. Then can I have the other bit? Yeah, sure. Lexi, do you know what this poem's about? What? What? Sylvia Plath was totally up the duff when she wrote this. Did you know that? No. Do you know what up the duff means? No. Well, she was pregnant at the time when she had a little bun in the oven. But she's called it here a little loaf. Isn't that nice? She was a marvellous poet. And a good mum, as good as she could be. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you about it one day. Okay. All right. Pop the loaves into the bowl. The next line is, bent back atlas, a travelled prawn. Now what I've done, Lex, you don't know this, but I've gone down to the seafood shop and I've brought us a well-travelled prawn. Do you know how you can tell if they're well-travelled? By looking them in the eyes. 
<laughs> what we're going to do is just, uh, have you ever de-shelled a prawn? No. Alright, get up I, here. No, don't want to do it. Let's do this. No. First we have to take off its head. Every Aussie needs to learn this, Lex. Take off its head. Oh, don't even show me its guts. Yep, yeah. take off its tail. Hey. You, you alright there? <laughs> You've got to learn this, you're guts. an Aussie. Guts. And then see these little legs? We need to take these legs straight out. We just we just pull them off with our thumb. And then comes the easy bit, Lex. We just oh, de-shell it. Pardon me, I think I've had a bit too much loaf. Oh, too much loaf, was it? Mm, I can't see that the head chopper. You can't even look at this. No. Well, look at this beautiful fresh, yeah. fresh meat. Mm -hmm. This is a good Australian, well-traveled prawn. And the last bit we need to check for, Lexi. Do you know what the last bit is? It's got a poo strip. Have you heard of a poo strip? No. Well, instead of pooing out its bum, it poos all the way down its back. So we need to find this poo strip. No, I don't want to see the poo. It runs like a spine all the way down its back. There it is. Take the poo strip out. Don't show me the That's poo That's the golden strip. rule of prawning, deprawning. And there we have our well-traveled prawn. Our next ingredient, Lexi, and I know you'll like this, we don't work with this very often, uh, which <laughs> makes it a very exciting recipe for us today. A creel of eels or ripples. Now, I went down to the local seafood store, so I had to buy, of course, an eel. An eel. Here it comes, Lex. Oh, look at it. It's a creel of eels. And um, do you want to kiss it? Do I have to? Yeah. Nice, nice. Oh. Do it again. Nice. Up. Oh. Happy with that? Yeah. <laughs> so put that on your board. <laughs> oh, Sylvia Plath, what were you doing? Okay, you've got your, your meat cleaver and you just want to chop its head off. Chop it into bits. Oh, Here that's it. <laughs> you right there? <laughs> <laughs> so, we've put the eel into the bowl, and all we have left is the last line, Lexi. Uh, jumpy as a Mexican bean. What have we got there? Beans. Now, we didn't just go and buy these from the shop, did we, Lex? We ordered no. these direct from Mexico. They are actual jumpy beans, and we just put them in the bowl. Oh, look at them jump, Lex. So jumpy. And there we have it, folks. This is what your dish should look like now with the eel and the little loaves and the beans. We're just going to put that in the oven at a 180 degree heat. We're going to put a bit of pastry on top. You might like to do that. And we'll be back in just a moment. All right, Lex, let's go. See ya. And here we have it, folks, fresh from the oven with a bit of pastry on top. That's what it should look like. This is Sylvia Plath's poem, Your, a classic poem and another beautiful dish. Let's tuck into it, shall we, Lex? Now I'm gonna chop it too. See you later. Best show ever. See you, Lex. See ya. Thanks for watching. Hey, puppy. Yeah, chat, chat. Chat. Come here, pup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm vegetarian, I don't even cut it.